Hey everybody, this is Rustin Rose of Metal Nation and Access, and joining us today, the amazing Noah Shark Robertson of Motor Grader. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing awesome. How is everything in the world of Motor Grader? It's going uh, a little too good. I need to keep my fingers crossed and hope it all doesn't come crashing down, because we're, we're on our way up. <laughs> Perspective and balance, right? Yeah. I mean, when I started, whenever I first joined this band i was just a fan i was a huge moto fan i had moto posters on my wall uh, i was sitting in my room trying to play along the motor grader songs and now i'm in the band and uh when when i got in the band nobody really know knew who motor grader was they kind of faded into obscurity we had four thousand likes on facebook and now we're playing festivals uh touring the u.s constantly we have a new album out uh, we're charting and uh, we have like 186,000 fans on Facebook. Yeah, it's a, it's a really blown up. And it was sort of interesting because you figure you're 14 years removed from the debut album. With the exception of Nuke, the lineup is sort of completely revamped. Was there ever even talk of starting fresh under a new name? Or were you guys always committed to Motor Grader's Rebirth? No, nah, man. The guys that are in this band completely respect the tradition and the, the everything that's behind this band. I mean, we just wanted to keep the same mood and vibe. We're just kind of like a tribe that changes members, you know. There's people that have told us to change the name or get rid of the paint, but I think Motor Grader has become something bigger than itself, and it it was something that deserved to, like, live on. I think there was enough fans out there and, and people that still wanted to see the, the Moto Gears turning, you know. The new album, Desolation, has been a long time coming. Tell us a bit about the journey to get here. Desolation has been the most insane journey to make this album happen. It's crazy. I mean, obviously the band's been trying to make something happen since around 2006 when Ivan Moody left, but just they could never get it off the ground. They couldn't get the band or the new Motivator album off the ground. And then finally we got the right group of guys together and the right perfect storm. And uh, for the past three years... We've been making this album, basically. We've been flying to different states. Some of the guys are flying to Denver to record at the Rue from El Nino Machine Head. He's our producer. I flew to Michigan to record with Josh Wickman. James was flying all over the country recording his parts. So it was just like a crazy, weird, and also to get the money, you know. It's like such a different day and age in the music industry. There's nobody willing to just throw huge amounts of cash at a band. So we had to raise all the money ourselves. So basically we've spent over ten thousand dollars and three years making this album mixing and mastering and getting it just right and uh it's been a long process in a nutshell it started where we were just recording everything in ourselves in our jam room then we went to the pre-production stage where we tried to record them a little better make them sound good so we can demo them to record labels and then we flew a roo out here for a week and he sat down with us and helped us revamp all the songs and kind of get them radio quality uh major label quality and radio friendly and all that good stuff and so he helped us like get the songs in working order and then we just started laying them down and of course you guys got picked up by dave ellison's new emp label that's got to be pretty exciting oh yeah definitely uh i mean to have dave ellison on the phone with you telling you that motor grader is awesome and he thinks we kick ass and he'd love to have us on the label i thought that was really cool and tom hazard has been awesome throughout this process you know, he claims that he was in Steve Richards' office the day Steve Richards signed Moto Grader because he was working for Steve Richards, and now he's the guy that gets to release, you know, the second album. So it's been, as we said, 14 years since that debut album. You guys have evolved quite a bit. The lineup has changed. The writing style has changed somewhat. Tell us about Desolation sonically from your perspective. Well, as I mentioned before, I was a huge fan of the band before I joined and Nuke, the guitar player, he is the original guitar player. He was in all the music videos. He's on the original album. And he had a lot to do with some of those older songs. So the Moto sound and songwriting is still there because you've got the main guy, Nuke, still in the band. But now he's supported by a group of guys who really respect and love the Moto Grader uh, name and the Moto Grader sound. And so what we've done is we've created basically a 2017 futuristic version of the band if you listen to it it, we're talking about all the same things and a lot of the lyrical content and the mood and the vibe is completely there you're going to hear that tribal metal sound that everybody loves but there's it's just kind of got a modern twist on it you know we've made sure that it's going to appeal to new and old fans alike 
Well, speaking of lyrical content, what was it you guys wanted to say on this album? What was sort of really weighing on your minds when you wrote the record? <laughs> to be honest, you know, Motor Grader's kind of been a doom and gloom band. And uh, for a lot of people, me included, it's kind of this weird cathartic release whenever you're experiencing something like that. So we wanted to take that a bit further. You know, on the original Moto album, Ivan's talking about prophecies uh, of things to come and how the world's headed down this certain path. Well, desolation is like we've arrived. The end is nigh. All the prophecies are actually coming true, and the world is ending. Locusts are blacking out the sun. There is no hope. It's just a really hopeless, disparaging album, but it's like really beautiful and uplifting at the same time, and which is like a key thing to motivator sound. Like it has to be like creepy and like scary, but it has to uh, have some like hopefulness in it somewhere as well. And then that's definitely what we've achieved with the new one. Yeah, and there's a good amount of melody on it too, which I really love. And one of the other things I really like about the album is the artwork. It's fantastic. Now, did you guys sort of have a hand in any of that, or did you just sort of leave it all in Sam Sheeran's capable hands? Sam's amazing, and we didn't really have to give him too much direction, but we did kind of know what we were going for. The album focuses a lot around, like, themes of death and decaying and, like, fear of dying and fear of decaying. Like, for instance, Dorian, the song Dorian, our new single, you know, it's about the Dorian Gray story and how the guy pretty much sold his soul to uh, have eternal youth and beauty, but every time he looked in the mirror, his, like, his parallel self was decaying or whatever. But basically, me and James just talked back and forth quite a bit about lyrics and, like, song content and kind of came up, the, the band kind of came up with this cool idea about the crow or raven on the skull like Edgar Allan Poe style, which is the crow or the raven is kind of like, in folklore, been the harbinger of death, the bringer of things to come. And so the the classic, like, crow standing on the skull is uh, kind of an old cliche thing, basically just saying in times are here or near, but uh, it has just like a modern twist on it. If you notice the little skull guy that's getting his eye ripped out by the crow, he's like a cyborg slash robot guy. And, you know, since everybody waited what, 14, 15 years for this album, I thought it would be cool to have the hand from the first album cover kind of, like, coming out of the ground and, like, like Freddy Krueger style and, like, announcing his return, like, we're back, you know? So the back of the album has, like, the original Moto hand, like, coming out of the ground, reaching for you, and, yeah, that's that's basically it. It really fits the vibe of the music, too, and uh, speaking of it, you just alluded to it, you just shot a video for the new single, Dorian, and you shot it at the old Ohio State Penitentiary, where they shot the Shawshank Redemption of Memory Serves. Tell us about that experience. Yeah, that was insane. Like, I can't even begin to put it into words. That place has a lot of history. It's super creepy and scary. You always feel like somebody's watching you. You know, despite the behind-the-scenes footage and the pictures, like, it looks bright in there, but seriously, it is dark and creepy everywhere else besides that room we were in because there's no electricity. It's such an old building. We had to, like, put hundreds... We had to put tons of... Uh, hundreds of feet of extension cords just to get power to that room that we were in. And um, the video almost didn't happen, you know? The director, Chris, from Human 12, like, we were having some issues where he just kind of couldn't make it there at the time that we needed him, and... uh so he shows up like really late. We didn't actually get started till like freaking 10, 11, 12 at night. And then by then the festival was over, Ink and the Clink, and the guys were like telling us, hey, we got to get you out of here. You got to leave. And we were like, oh my God, we just got set up. We just got painted. We're right about to start shooting. You got to give us a chance. And they were like, sorry, it's not our problem. You need to, you know, you need to leave. And then one of the guys that works there, um, this older gentleman named Mike, he totally just came walks up out of nowhere and he's like oh i'll hang out with the guys i'll stay here as long as they need so he pretty much saved the day and uh we were there till like 6 a.m uh shooting this video and uh we think it's going to be killer because like you like you said it's in the shawshank redemption prison uh god smack and lil wayne recorded some music videos there and like you can see why when you see this footage you're gonna flip (laughs) <laughs> nice. Well, thank you, Mike, for sticking around so this could happen. Do we have a date yet yeah. when that's actually going to drop and we'll get to see it? You know, whenever we were leaving that night, I asked the video guy, hey, when do you think, you know, that this thing could come out? We have an album dropping August 11th. And he was like, oh, well, you'll get it before then. So we haven't got any test shots or a reel yet. We should be getting one really soon. But the video is either going to come out 
right before the album drops or right around the same time the album drops. So we, we should be seeing it really soon within the next couple of weeks. You know, one of my favorite songs on the album is Victim. Tell us a little bit about that one. Ah, yes, Victim. You know, we made a very conscious effort to put songs on the album that were just complete radio-friendly songs. Like, let's write some songs that can be on the radio and make us money. Because at the end of the day, every artist wants to be successful. You want people to like your stuff. And in order to survive, I mean, you've got to be commercially viable. So there are tracks on there. You can tell we just totally wanted to write radio songs. But then, you know, we need our street cred and our motor graderness because motor graders always kind of been known as a heavy band. So we've got tracks on there like Victim that are like super heavy. Victim is a cool song because it's just balls to the wall heavy. And then the, the lyrical content, you know, James, he wrote that song about basically people who are always crying about being the victim and blaming everyone else for their problems and not themselves. And, uh, yeah, it's just, a, it's just a groovy, heavy, hard-hitting song. It is a great song, and, and he's so spot on because we, we have such an entitled nation anymore. Everybody's a victim of everything else, and nobody wants to step up, take ownership, and take control of their life. It's really, it really sort, sort of ties into the whole theme of, of that decay as, as people, even, you know, where we've come as yeah. society. So before we get out of here, what's new at Zombie Shark Records that listeners should be checking out? Oh, man. Zombie Shark Records, you know, it started as this little stupid idea one day because I saw a huge resurgence in new metal uh, and industrial and all the stuff that I grew up loving. And um, it didn't seem like record labels were, like, kind of realizing this trend that new metal was coming back, you know. I, I realize there's a stigma behind the word, but you can call it what you want. If you want to call it new metal, if you want to call it alternative rock, whatever you want to call it, it's making a huge comeback. So... I just stuck my love of shark and horror movies together and came up with the zombie shark name. Got some zombie shark tattoos and stuff. And uh, I started finding these new metal bands that were working really hard to get somewhere, but were basically being rejected by the record labels because they sounded like new metal or they were using the new metal genre name. So I created a home for those bands and it's kind of taken off. You know, there, there's this little underground murmur of zombie shark records being the at the forefront of this new metal revival we've got some great bands i just signed a, a band called dirty machine they're they're basically limp biscuit and stuff not combined on steroids they wear masks they have a dj great band keychain their their album was recorded by the same guy who recorded acdc and the rolling stones so you got to check out keychain that album is amazing and then um I, we've got junk not as lived rickshaw their album just came out rickshaw is amazing if you like tool perfect circle american head charge Cold Chamber, if you like bands like that, you'll love Rickshaw. Uh, we just signed Junk, which is led by a Hollywood movie star named Billy Blair, who's in a bunch of movies like Machete and uh, all kinds of other stuff. We've got The Black Crown from Italy, great band. Who else? I mean, a lot of great I'm probably stuff. forgetting some people. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I was just going to say uh, it hasn't been announced yet, but we're going to sign a band called No Self from Florida. And I'm telling you, I listen to this band like 100 times a day. No Self is going to be massive, in my opinion. Their album is insane, and it holds up to bands like Cane Hill, Nothing More, Dead. It, you got to go check out No Self immediately. They're insane. Absolutely. Well, we'll spread the word. So just for fun, before we get out of here, I play fantasy football. What's the dirtiest thing you do? Oh, man. I'm a huge closet nerd. Like, I'm a big, burly metal guy with long hair and a goatee, a chain, tattoos. I mean, I'm a very stereotypical metalhead, but behind closed doors, I'm a huge nerd. Um, I used to collect Pokemon cards and Magic the Gathering. You know, when I was a teenager, I played Dungeons and & Dragons. And um, the only thing that's really carried over until to adulthood, because, you know, I turned 34 yesterday, uh, I'm still a comic book nerd. I love Spider-Man, Venom, and Carnage, and uh, yesterday on my birthday, I went to a comic shop and picked up a, a random Carnage comic, so I'm a Carnage, I'm a comic book nerd, pretty much. Nice. Excellent. All right, so last question, just for fun, before we head out. What current pop culture trend needs to die an ugly death immediately? Uh, you know what, man? <laughs> I uh, I studied music in college, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a music teacher, and one of my philosophies and mottos is like I don't really ever talk badly about um, I don't really ever talk badly about any kind of music you know I don't think there is any kind of music that needs to die and go away I love it all but 
if I had to pick and I was a gun to my head and I had to answer, I think that the whole like folk rock, folk pop thing revival has kind of like run its course. I, I'm a little sick of it. Like the bands doing the weird like folk rock uh, revival, mixing it with pop. Like Imagine Dragons and all those guys, they're cool. They're cool, great bands, but just the whole revival of it is um, kind of getting on my nerves. But I mean, maybe that's just me. <laughs> all right, Noah <laughs> Shark Robertson of Motor Grader, the new album Desolation out on the 11th, correct? You got it, August 11th. Perfect. You guys are going to be out on tour all summer. They are fantastic live. You got to go see them. Pick up the new album as soon as it's out. Do not illegally download it. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time to chat with us, man. Oh, yeah, no problem. Thank you.